Hi, everybody. I'm just going to check the chat to see if hi, Dana. Um, if anybody can hear me. Just check it. Okay, so thank you. Hope you're well. And we will start on the dot. Um, you'll see that um, the weather has changed today. I've got my beach shirt on, but um, overnight we had a terrible snowstorm. So it's um, quite a change in weather here today. <laughs> yeah. That's my, ha that's my house in the background. I just thought I, I, I didn't have time to move my computer into the house, so... Okay. So I think we'll just get started, yeah? We've got a few people coming into the room now. Okay, so this is our final session um, on the three-part webinar series. Um, just checking here. Okay, everybody's there. Good. Good, good. Okay, so um, let's have a look at, um, you know, You've been great following the, the project journey that I've been on. Um, some of you may be here today that has been in all the sessions. Some of you may be new today. So I'm just going to quickly run through very, very quickly the slides and then we'll get started. Um, and obviously it's a holiday weekend. So um, we all have sketch up um, lockdown is pretty crazy and, uh, you know, it's taken up my time anyway, so I'm sure um, after this three-day session that you probably feel more invigorated to get stuck in. Um, I'll do my best to reply back to emails as soon as I can. Okay. Uh, special thanks again to Elm Tech, the SketchUp sole distributor in the UK, and SketchUp themselves. Q&A at the end, as always. Try to restrict it to session three on day one and two, but it's just impossible. Everybody's jumping up asking questions, which is good. Um, again, we will be doing uh, webinars um, in the future, um, so I'll talk about that shortly. Um, very quick recap, 2020.1 uh, maintenance release was, um, was launched or released on the 1st of May. You probably want to get your hands on it. So session three, um, we're going to look at advanced workflows. It's getting pretty cold in here, so I'll need to start working fast. Um, the powerful extensions, I'm going to just recap on what we've done because I've done, you know, quite a bit of work on them. Um, what I plan to do is have a dedicated extensions uh, webinar. So I'm thinking of having the Flex Tools guys, they want to actually do a webinar solely on their uh, toolbar. So I will be emailing everybody if when we're ready to go with that. Same with the profile builder. Um, anything that we have, we want to do a webinar on it. So, you know, you're going to be hearing it straight from the creators. They'll be doing a presentation as well. So I think it's good to really start asking a lot of questions for that. Um, so we'll just get further forward here. Yes. I think it's sinking in now that um, you really have to be structured with your modeling. If it's concept and you don't have the time, then, you know, there's ways of grabbing the geometry, you know, um, and then turning it into a component or a group and then putting it on a tag. But um, I try and work that way from the ground up. Um, so I'm just wondering right now, um, whether you want to do this now is your opportunity, because we have started. Um, this is a competition that we're having, okay? The email address at the top, jamesogston at c at 3 d without the hyphens dot co dot uk, um, to win a free eight hour training course or training session with myself. What I want you to do is email me the answers to the bottom two questions. 
Okay, the first email that I get with the right answer will get the eight hour training session. So let's just look at it. It's in SketchUp 2020. Describe what a nested component is. Um, whether you, you know, send me a file or just type it in an email and, and send it off to me. Describe the benefits of color by tag in SketchUp 2020. Okay, so the time starts now. So as soon as I get the first email in that is the right answer, um, I will, I'll be announcing it on social media as well, who won. So um, you have that there. Okay, there may be some other people joining the class later on, but um, maybe pull this up later on. But by that time, I would expect somebody has, um, or many of you have uh, emailed me into my inbox. So we will see. Okay. Right. Okay, I'm going to jump in now and go on to finalizing the modeling and just get through the rest of what we have to do today. And then I'll see you back shortly. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to fill this um, room in here with some furniture. I'm just going to add this room in and then, you know, the other ones will pop up later. Just going through the same motion with adding in detail, adding in uh, interior fittings. So I think we've, we've seen a bit with that uh, yesterday. But um, let me just save this file right now. Um, I'm going to go into start a new file. So remembering that we did the um, photo match model of the microwave. I hope you liked that. It made me hungry after the after the class. So I don't put uh, Walker's crisps in the microwave. So um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, Import. Um, I'm going to bring in those three images. OK, so the first one in here. File, Import. It would be great if we could do multiple imports here. Final one. Multiple imports at the same time, I should say. Right, okay. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle down here. It's going to be a, a picture frame. And we're going up by 875, 1215. Enter. I'm just going to click up in the blue here a size this is going to be the frame section 34 go along in the red 69 go in the blue hold the shift key move down onto the surface click and then go back to here okay i'm going to select this see for component picture frame so what i want to do is i want to follow this all the way around here so a uh, useful technique to retain this as a component. Um, let me just do one thing or else we'll get annoyed with the notifications. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to use a follow me, um, but retain the component. Okay, so I select the surface. I go over to the follow me tool, click on it. Right click on the component. Edit the component. Click on the surface. Bang. OK. I'm going to triple click this to select it. Right click, reverse the faces, click out. OK, so underneath here, um, this surface is the full size. I'm just going to um, scale it in OK, from the center. I can scale from the center using the control key on Windows. Or the options key on the Mac. Okay, I'm just going to take that. I'm going to move this up. Just take it up here to the that side. Okay, so this um, image here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to 
explode it so that it's a material. And I'm going to sample it with the paint bucket, holding down the Alt key or the Command key on the Mac, and then click to paint it. So this is quite a large image. So I'll right click, texture, position. So zooming out, you get this tiled effect. Uh, what I want to do first of all is scale by press dragging this down. I'm going to drag this up. So you see these four colored pins. I'm just going to right click on one of them, turn off the fixed pins. Then I'm going to press drag this over to about here. You see how it's distorting the texture? I can actually click on this and choose the corner of the image which is the inside corner of the frame on the photograph. Click here, do the same about here. Click here, up to here. Click on this one, over to here. Fantastic. So it's just like taking uh, drawing pins and repinning them on the pin board. Uh, I'm going to press drag this up to the endpoints. So this is going to fit neatly inside the frame. Oh. This happens a few times. I don't know whether it's a bug, but they jump out back into colors. I'm just going to right click, fix pins, press drag. I'll report it later. Okay, and then press drag this one here. I'm here in my inbox pinging. I think there's quite a few people that have sent a, an answer. Um, let's right click, done. Okay, so there's the first picture. I'm just going to select this nice picture of a a cuddly bear. Just going to move this down to the midpoint through the frame and click. Okay, so let me just double click that and then delete. Select this and then just move this over near. So this texture is quite a large scale. I'm going to scale it down just to try and make the grain proportional to the frame. On the frame itself, I'm going to just create some miter lines. Now, mitering, um, I'm using the rotated rectangle. Click once, click twice, go down. Let me just go to X-ray because it's underneath there. Click. Okay, so there you go. Second one, click, move, click, go down. Oh. Click, move, click, go down, click. There, there, and there. I would love the follow me to have a miter option on it on the corners. It would be really good. There we go. Okay, so clicking back out and turning off the x-ray. I'm going to right click on this here and explode it so it becomes a sketch up surface. Uh, you'll see when you pull this up here, this is streaking. So this is what's called projected textures. Um, I'm going to right click on the top and I'm going to go to texture and uncheck projected. So now if I sample this with the paint bucket, you click here, it wraps it around the corner. So that's exactly what I want. I'm going to right click and edit the component. And just because I clicked on this before, I can just go straight over there and click. I'm just going to press H around here. And here. So what I want to do is keep the grain direction as it would be. Um, a neat trick is to select all the stuff first and then B for bucket click. Okay. If I press H, this uh, texture of this model here is outside the active component. I can still sample it, however, and then paint. I could even do it from here as well. Okay. I'm going to right click on this texture. Um, position, here we are, right click, rotate, 90, right click, done. Okay, so select, paint bucket, click, oh, let me just undo that, select this, control key, click. So the control key, click, is painting all of that, okay. Do the same here. I'm just going to click on this one. It's matching the, the grain from the other side. Control key, click. And there's the frame done. Okay, let's click out. Triple click this and delete it. So this remaining 
looks like a little fox to me. Little sweet little cuddly animal, just like the bear. Just gonna move this up, so like this. Make a copy. Okay, this here is outside the active component, so I'm gonna double click it. Double click in it, I'm gonna to go to cut. Double click onto the component, and then I'm gonna use edit paste in place. So what it does is it takes that geometry in the real world into the frame world of the component. Click out, but look what it does on the other side here, okay? So what I need to do here is right click on right click on this one and make it unique. I'm going to double click on this and delete this for now because there was a double surface on it. Um, I'm going to go in here now and if I right click on this and go to texture position and I just move this off, right click done, right click close, you see that this is a different component now, it's unique. Okay, um, so I'm just going to right click on this and explode it, sample it, right click in here and edit the component and paint and then I'll resize it and right click texture position and drag the pins down. Again right clicking to bring the fixed pins on and just pin them in the corners. Just doing this fairly quick. Looking not bad. Right click done, right click done. Okay, so let's get rid of that. What I'll do is I'll just move this, but it's, because it's a component, I can just move this over to about here. Okay, and then I'll select it. I'll go to the um, Rotate tool, just put it onto the face there and onto this grip at the bottom, click, move along, click, move up there, click. So I've got the axis right at the back here, not bad, I'm just going to save it as, let's just put it into there. Fluffy animals. Okay, but what I'm also going to do, I'm going to right click on it. In fact, let me just, um, yeah, let's make this a component. Okay, let's right click on both of it and make it a component. Um, artwork. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to use this technique to right click and save as. Um, this can save straight into a project folder, which I can pull through um, from the component browser. So I'll put this into my interior models. So not only have I got a copy of it here, I've got it, I'm putting it into the library here. Artwork. And there we go. Okay, so let's go back to the main model. Let the animals save it. Okay, let's go to our component browser because we've already got this set up um, as a path. Quite a few copies there. Artwork, here we are. Bring it in over to here. Just move it up. So I'm going to go to the top rear corner of the artwork, click on it, put it right on the wall, then go to the rotate tool. I'll press the arrow up key. The arrow up key can flip to the blue. Green is to the left, red is to the right. Okay, so up there into the blue, it snaps it. I can click here, move along to the corner and put it right onto that wall. Not bad. 
So if I wanted to center that, um, I do a lot of um, drawing marker lines. Okay, so if I draw a marker line along here, which is perpendicular to the wall, and the neat thing about this one here is, with the new feature in the 2020.1, um, well, in fact, not with the move tool, sorry, it's only with the rotate tool. But if I press the Alt key here, you'll see it toggles to midpoints on that bounding box where my mouse is. Okay, so what I can do is I can take this up to here, find that point, midpoint of the artwork, click, take it along here, hold the shift key and lock it onto the midpoint and then erase that. Okay, so let's save that. So next what we want to do is we want to go to the 3D warehouse because I know that there's a nice L-shaped sofa. Somebody told me about it. L-shaped sofa. So tons of models here. I'm just going to scroll down, look for one. Many L-shaped. I know the one I'm looking for. Somebody told me what it looks like. See if we can search. No, okay, let me close this down. Let me search for it in here. Maybe I've passed it. It'll probably come up here quicker on a popular search. That's something that I need to find out. There it is there. So if I shaped, I got it wrong. Yeah, okay, click on the picture. Let's bring it over. going to rotate it round and the cool thing about this which is so great is when you go to the rear corner here it turns to transparent mode so I can snap into the corner so I don't need to orbit round and get into this funny orbiting uh, scenario I'm just going to click here take it over to the corner go right down and there it is there let me go to the rotate tool Arrow up key, click, go over to the grip, which is through the wall, click, take it over to there, so much faster. Okay, I'm going to go into this component now, and in particular, the cushion. I'm just going to get rid of this one and this one, and I'm going to zoom into it, and I'm going to use a plugin called Sketch UV. And Sketch UV helps you to map the material pattern around surfaces um, gives you a lot more control so it doesn't become all kind of triangulated. Um, here we go here. It's used by a lot of visualizers. There are other ones out there as well that are equally, if not more powerful. So what I do is I click here. Um, I then click the vertex in the middle here. It kind of centers it. I then hold the um, the uh, tab key down and click outside that gives a grid now that what that does is it helps me to align the model against the grid okay and then if i want to go to the 3d warehouse again for this sofa i'm going to click on the blue text and it'll take me straight to that sofa and the good thing about this is there are materials that you can download if I click on this here, I like this green color. I'm going to download it, and that will take it straight into the material browser uh, in model. And there it's there. Click. Start. Now it's all, you've probably seen this before if you tried it yourself. Um, so I'm going to click on this. Right click, planar map. You must select at least. One surface, okay, select it, right click. You have to click this first. 
then right click planar map. Okay, so then we've got this large scaled material. I'm going to hold the shift key and arrow to the left. I'm just going to keep pressing, 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 and then arrow down. What I'm doing is I'm scaling it right down to get a kind of pattern. There is something weird about this model. I've seen this happening, so don't, don't be too worried about it. And then I can right click save the UVs and then right click load UVs. Okay, now that's it mapped right round. Uh, what I'm going to do with this up here is I'm just going to go to the paint bucket tool, alt key click and then paint. And it maps it all the way around. It looks a lot more uniform than it was before. Okay, then I'm just going to click out. What I'll do is I will just copy a couple of these over. This here, I'm going to go into this one. I'll just go to white and I'll paint it with the control key. Similarly, in fact, yeah, I'll do the same with this one. Let me just check the mono. Yeah, the monochrome's showing that the model here has got face reversing. This should really be kind of cleaned up, but that's why I'm getting the kind of uh, double click option for painting. I'll just click it here and then I'll click here as well. Okay. Let's do the backrest. The reason why it's not changing here is because it's already been painted inside. So it's kind of got rid of its um, automatic painting feature, which you can take advantage of when you're working with SketchUp sometimes. Let's go to the um, fabrics. Go for this texture, paint it here. Paint it here. Okay. Right click out, close. Do you ever see this in SketchUp? You get this clipping plane coming through the model. Just press Shift Z. Okay, Shift Z for zoom extents, and then you get back in. Okay, I'm going to go to camera perspective so I can see down and have a better view. Um, I'm just going to paint this and just put kind of steel color around here. There we go. I'll go to my um, library now where I've got some of my interior models. Download the coffee table. Downloading, I want to look for this nice lamp and this lounger. You know, if you've got some spare time, have a look at some of the models, grab them and make libraries of them because uh, it's a fantastic resource, don't get me wrong, but um, sometimes if you're under pressure to try and get work out the door, you can search. I know that they've got AI uh, in the warehouse now, artificial intelligence that helps for searching faster. So my attempt earlier on was purely because I didn't put the, the correct reference in. So, you know, it just, it happens to us all. There we go. Just rotating around and then just take it across. Move this light around. Okay. So let's put some more color on the frames. So what I want to do is just color these frames of the flex tool uh, windows and doors that we put in yesterday. This one here needs a little bit of color on it. Been painted deeper than, um, than I thought. What I mean by that is sometimes when you make a component, you go in and you paint directly onto the surface and then you make the component so you don't have the intelligence and the fast response to repaint it. For example, this one here, if I click it, 
it changes all in one go. Okay, if I went to here and I clicked it there, it changes. It's because it's not been given a, a paint material. It's basically default paint in the components. So it can be quite fast to, to paint over. Okay. Looking not too bad. Let me just go to the, uh, let's get rid of this. So let's put some um, wood material on the floor. Let's do it inside the component because it'll wrap itself around other components that I really don't want it to do, for instance, the stair. Okay, so let me go to, all I'm doing is finding the surface, double clicking on it, double clicking on it. The automatic height feature is really, really useful. Okay, this was the step up that we did to go over the steel. I'm going to right click, reverse the, I don't want to reverse the face. Right click, um, texture, position. Right click the pin, rotate. Now, I'll, if I bring on the fixed pins here, just to mention a bit, these fixed pins do different things, okay? So when I put my mouse over here, it is scale, rotate, texture. This one here is um, distort the texture, scale or shear, or move. Now, if I press drag this here, it will move it down onto that point. If I drag over here and rotate round, you see I can rotate it round. Now, if I want to maintain its scale, I keep my cursor on the arc and I take it round. It's quite a big arc to rotate round here, so just take it round until I'm happy with that position about there yet. Yeah. Right click done. Click it. Okay. Been a little lot to save. Let's go to the section tool. Section tool, um, it detects the faces. So if I want to put it onto plan, I can press the arrow up here to lock it. And if I click here, um, I'll just call this plan. Uh, let me just get rid of this here. Lower level one. I'll just call this one. And click OK. Okay, so you see how it numbers the arrow codes. And then uh, it helps me to see down into the model as well. Uh, I'm just going to turn the plane off so I can directly get in there. Um, I'm going to bring in some dynamic doors. So I'll go into my folder of project dynamic components and we have the dynamic door component lower level one. I'm just going to drag it over. Okay so it's cutting the model here so what I can do is click here take my mouse over onto the the plane of the section ideally away from the model if you want to click on it away from the model let me just press escape and right click away from this first. Click and then just move up. Okay, as long as I can see the door head, that gives me a, a good idea that this is fitting in correctly. And then I can turn off the section display. Okay, so I'll go down to here. I'm going to click on the actual model of the frame just to put it in here. Okay, so again, the dynamic component here has got the interact tool, and I can click back and forward. Okay. All these openings are the same, so what I can do is I can copy this and rotate this round and move it into place. And do a copy here as well. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to make this unique because I want to open this door separately. Or I get that. I can be quite funky at times, but 
what I want to do is go down into the ground and look in here. So if I click on here to open the door, take the position camera, click on the ground, and I'm looking up into this storeroom or linen cupboard, okay? It's cutting the ceiling, so what I'll do is I will turn off the active cut. And I'm going to bring in, a, you can have a play with this as well. There's a dynamic components training section through the component browser. You click it, and it's got a series of all these standard uh, components that you could play about with, just to give you a sense of how powerful these things are. Okay, I'm just going to drop this in, and I will rotate it around. I'll go to the back corner. I really love that feature. It just saves so much time. Um, I will repeat that for a long time. Um, options, let's go to the width. So the width of this room is 1,000. Apply. Okay, so it's jumped. Um, if I go to the corner here, I'll just put it over there. And that's it perfectly fitting in the back of that room. Um, the depth, I'll make it 350. There could be towels and shoes that's going in there. It's jumped back. Um, I'll click on this there and pull it forward. Look at that. That's so easy. Um, the height of the room here, I go from here down to here, is 2693. Height. 2693. Apply. And we'll put some texture on it. So, cherry wood. Apply. You see the what they call Z fighting in SketchUp it means that that surface at the back is directly on the same face as the wall. So we'll just go in there and we'll just move this forward a touch. Just take this forward to about one millimeter. There we go. Hop. Okay, let me just do Shift Z to zoom out, to zoom extents. Um, I'll bring the cut back on, double click it. Double clicking on this section cut or this section plane just activates the cut again um, and just turn this off again. So earlier I um, you know, dropped in the other interior stuff because you've seen the process and you've maybe done it time and time again, but a lot faster now with these new drip features. Let's go to the tags. So we have the lower level bathroom and the lower level balustrade. So uh, the lower level, sorry, bedroom. Of these little animals. Okay. Um, in the bathroom, I did a fit out here. Um, I thought about, you know, putting something in like this. Um, this can become a working drawing because it's one-to-one -one scale and it's accurate. Um, also finished off just putting a little rubber duck in there as well. Um, so, you know, really pretty impressive. You get some great elevations from SketchUp if you're doing wall elevations and just basically doing an interior fit-out design. Um, I've modeled these as well, um, and they're on the, in my own personal uh, library. I'm going to upload them onto my 3D warehouse um, section, talking of which, I'm going to go to my own 3D warehouse section and I'm going to download a socket. So up here is me, my public page. And down here, I've added some of these. Want to add a lot more. Um, what I want to look for is this one. 110 downloads, that's not bad. Click. Load this directly into SketchUp model, yes, please. And then I'll just place this on the wall. This comes up really well when you're rendering. You know, you want to, um, uh, my background is technical and architecture, and, you know, I, I will want to model all these things because definition is key. Um, I'm going to go and maybe kind of... Uh, thin down this rug. I wouldn't like to walk in this room at night after I shoot this down. 
if I click there, it disappears. It would be great to have an option to choose whether you want to retain it or keep it. It's just take this down. I retain it or, 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 or lose it, I should say. I'm just very excited. Click out. Okay, well, it's not bad. I mean, that will come up in the elevations. If we do cross sections through this building here, you would see these elevations, you know, like a cross section here. Um, somebody mentioned earlier about CAD. I mean, importing CAD is a very strong workflow in SketchUp, and so is exporting SketchUp to CAD. Or take it to layout, you know, you want to save from having to do the mundane CAD drafting to the drafting work. Um, there we go, align view. Camera parallel projection, just zoom in there. So that, that's your elevations, even if you go to hidden line. Um, just turn off this here. Sorry. Um, one little tip. You see the furniture here that's not quite shown very well? That's to do with the profiling of your style. Okay, so if I go to my style manager, um, house icon, okay, I've changed this over from the current style. Let me go to a style that I've already created down here, my styles. I'm going to drag this one up. Right, I would say no, because that is the sketch style. Let me take this one up. Let me take this one up as well. These have different um, requirements for different things. For example, if I want to take this to CAD, it's using the color by tag option. If I want to put it onto wireframe, or if I want to have it onto um, you know hidden line mode, I can export that out. Now talking about the the loss of geometry there. Even on any other style, it's to do with the edge settings, profiles, and change the profile to one, enter. Now that's going through the CAD part of the section. That's the reason why that's not showing up. Okay. Um, if I take it back to um, this one. Let's just put this on to a hidden line. And let's change it in here. Profiles, see the difference? Put it down to one, there we go. So we can actually define a lot of the models now that I'm finding on the 3D warehouse are taken into account. Maybe it's the rendering engine as well, taking into account the outline, which is really important on your sections and on your plans. Um, and there is my little double socket outlet with the screws on there as well. Okay, so everything that's coming in here is modeled for a reason. It's all in the detail. And the good thing about it is you can add to it as long as you're building in a sustainable manner. I'll just go back in here. Uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of skirting in here. I'll go to the profile builder. So on here, what I'm going to do is draw up. I'll go for 125. I'll come out, I'll go for 25. I'll come down, hold the shift key, infer to the corner, click and go back to that point. Hang on. It's slightly off. Yep. Let me just put that right on there. As I say, it's in the detail. Click on the edge. Very crisp. Come out over here. 25, come down, 
refer to here, click and go back. Okay, so this surface here, just gonna do pencil round edge. I'm gonna select it, I'm gonna go to the Fill Builder dialog. PR skirting. Pencil round skirting. There we go. Okay, so the insertion point is here. I want it to be down at the bottom here, so I just choose this bottom right. It's giving me the size. I could change that at any time, it will adjust the profile. Um, I can tell it what material to have. I'll go for this wood one. And the layer is going to go on. So I could go into the um, interior. Interior furniture, or just put it on there. And then I'm going to click on this. Now, obviously, this is here as a profile. Let me just uh, get rid of this. Click there. You would have a skirting block in the corner by just taking it along. Come on. There we go. Down to the end and then down. Um, let me just turn off the cut. It's done a kind of funny one with this. Let me change the angle here. I could draw a line in the air and, and then sweep it out. He's done it and then it's stopped. Let me just undo back. That wasn't very good. Look there. I should really move the bed out of the way. Click, then come down here, right down to the bottom onto the facing. With an auto save. There we go. Okay, and it's always going to put it onto the layer with the material as well, or all, all the tag. Um, apologies, folks, if I've said layer a lot, I'm trying to get used to the new terminology called tagging. So um, I'll smack my wrist and try and get that ingrained into my head. Um, so I've done quite a bit. Maybe put a planter in the corner here. So I have got the SU Podium plugin. It's a rendering software, but it's got a really great um, library resource for many architectural, um, interior design, and sort of gardening uh, models, plus others. Just going to click here. These are render ready with Podium. Very high quality. Just going to go along here and look for the little planter. As you say, you could just enjoy watching this. Okay, downloading 100%. It's quite a small thing. I'm just going to scale this up. I'm sure you've done this as well. Scale it up, put it in the corner. Okay, it could have been a bigger one, but not today. Um, what I've also done as well is I have added in a few extra outdoor furniture. On the top there, just to sit out and relax. 
let's see if there's something else to set out and um, enjoy some of the sun that we have. Just opening this up again. Click here, let's go to exterior residential. They must have the snow as well. Just click to see if I can refresh it, that's better. Let's go for this outdoor assembly. So, I mean, look at the range of, and, and the thing is with these uh, fires, you know, the, the fires actually glow when you render it in the rendering engine. It's really, really good stuff. Let's start here. Right, so, We've got two other things to put onto this model. We have got the rock structure. Now, the rock structure has been set to a datum point in the project. And the chosen datum point was at this point here, um, everybody, everybody of the whole design team are working from this datum point. So the datum point of the SketchUp axis is right in this corner as well. Now, what I'm going to do is again this this advanced workflow feature i use a lot is components i set a marker i make it a component i make sure that the axis is on the right orientation and right datum point now what i can do with that is right click um this is before trimble connect of course right um similarly you can do the same thing with that upload which i'll talk about briefly in a second or two um Let's go to reload. So the rock structure has been scanned and um, you know ready to be loaded in. It would help if I come out of OneDrive. Here we go. Right. That's what it's called. Let's just kind of see here. Okay, so there's the rock structure. Open. And there you see with the definitive datum point on the project, the, the laser scanned rock, um, whether it's been kind of um you know, um, analyzed, scanned, uh, realized that from a structural point of view, these uh, rocks will help to support the, the building. We now have it tying in with the datum point. Now, somebody said about landscape terrain. Uh, we can definitely do terrain training. I love terrain modeling. Uh, garden design, landscape design, and sketchup is fantastic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reload in the terrain as well, just using a similar datum point. This is why I use components all the time. I want, I want a point of reference on every project that I work on. I can call this datum. And then I can right click reload in the agreed datum from the terrain model as well, which is how it would be set out on site. Looks like it's loaded in. That confirms it to me that we have the terrain and the surrounding tree survey. OK, so you see the benefits of that. Everything's coming in on a specific point. And that is why we use that time and time again. Let me just go to the outliner here and have a look at this. This is a great new feature. I've seen a couple of things happen recently. I, mean, I don't quite understand with it. I'll need to talk to um, Elmtech about bring this on. And there we go. Just go to Edit, Delete Guides. So then I can choose my scenes, okay? So, you know, I can go to like a, 
uh, what I do a lot is this as well, folks, is if I want a, a view straight onto that, um, I tend to just draw a rectangle on the face, and then I right click on it, um, and I go to align view. I would really like, I don't know, there might be a plugin out there where you can just directly click on the face and it jumps around, you know, just to set it off. I can change this to parallel projection. Yeah, there's this clicking thing. It's because also that there's a lot of geometry outside the model that can tend to clip the model. There is a plugin to fix that. I know that, that um, Dan Tal has it um, for landscapes, so it's really useful. I'll just keep that there, okay? And then save the file. So um, the last thing I want to talk about, real super advanced uh, workflow now, um, is I'm going to open up a file that I created for Trimble Connect. Now, I've been waiting for so long for this to come out because, to me, it's really important um, to collaborate, especially in 3D, um, because it's far easier than 2D collaboration. Uh, you know, you're never going to find errors on site, drawings don't line up, um, but you want the whole team involved. Okay, so what I've got here is I have the, the model as it stands now, and um, Trimble Connect is this toolbar up here. So if you're working on a project for building information modeling, or you just decide that this is the way to coordinate all our 3D projects, in fact, all our projects, is we're going to upload this model to Trimble Connect collaboration platform. The architects, interior designers, garden designers, landscape structural engineer, they're all going to load up their files, and then you'll be able to clash detect and calculate um, you know, the components in the model and basically model manage. Um, the next thing is to then, if it's managed in the model with Trimble Connect, is then to coordinate it to site to make sure it's built correctly. It's okay, fair enough, saying that BIM is accurate, but you need to accurately fix the datums on site and make sure it's built correctly or else, um, you know, it all goes crazy. Costs, day works, the whole lot. Um, claims, everything. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go to this one here is publish the model to Trimble Connect. Okay, so it's going to upload this model. So this is me sharing this model on the collaboration system. Uh, it can be reviewed, revision, noted. Um, all traces of work being done on the models are noted. It's a project management system. Um, I'm dying to get into it, really am. So what we've got is we've got about four minutes on this, and then what I'll do is I'll open up the chat and deal with some questions. Um, I've got everything on here, okay, so it's going to take all the plants, everything up there. Let's go down to here. Open Trouble Connect on the web. Go to my web browser. Sign in. Here's my project. Let's 
Or Trimble Connect, just going to click on it. We have a couple of copies there. I'm just I'm so excited about this that I'm just take me in there. Yeah, but I think that's what's happened. Trimble Connect 3D Viewer. To me, this is revolutionary. Um, But see if yours opened up right enough, maybe that's not helping. It's usually a lot faster than us. It could be because of the Zoom uh, webinar um, software, I don't know. Let me just go to the, let me just close one of these. As I say, I double clicked and um, it's maybe Trimble Viewable. Okay, I would even know that right. So here's our, our, our um, Trimble Connect coordination model that's been loaded up onto the platform. So things like, I mean, you can orbit, you can add dimensions, you can put clipping planes in here, you know, and just move it through the model very professional looking system. Um, the thing about this here, um, I'm not too sure. I have asked and I, I think I've got it confirmed um, with the distributor. Um, clash detection. Um, you need to have two or more models selected to run the clash test. Now, hang on. If I select this here, it still doesn't come up for me. Now, what I think is it has to see two other um, disciplines, you know, like some different consultants models coming in before it can run a class detection. But that is just really so good. I mean, you know, you click on this now, you've got information about it. Um, do you want to discard changes? Changes with velocity, you want to proceed anyway. And I'm just going to leave that for now. Okay, so you can actually call up, you know, information about the model. Um, it will count the components, and this is just, this is it, you know. Just that that normally doesn't happen. It's maybe something that I've done here. Do you want to discard the changes? Do you want to proceed anyway? What happens if I say? Let me just cancel this. So you see it's, it's coming up with an inner step. Um, if I click on the roof, it's coming up with the roof. Let me just click this guard. What happens when I do this? There we go. Okay, so upper level roof. Okay, so you know this is um, new a new frontier. I'm really excited about this uh, BIM collaboration software. So uh, well done, Trimble. So let's get back into the PowerPoint just to finish off. Um, the two D people, yes, two D people in SketchUp. Um, we have got these 2D people uh, components that are really, really good. Um, if I go to, let me just minimize this here. So I have a folder that's got series one and series two. Let's do 
just bring in. Okay, so I'm bringing in somebody here. I'm just going to place them on the top. Now, the beauty of these uh, these components is that when you change your style of your model, you know, if you've got this um, shade of the textures on and you want to go to, um, let's say, hidden line, now the detail on that is okay for now, but I'll just go down to styles. Bring on the profiles again, just so that you've seen it. Add the profiles, see the outline. So these, uh, these two the people, you can turn off this and bring on this one, and it brings on the outline, okay? So you can define them more. Um, so if I go to shade of the textures, they have the color on them, okay? And I can go from, from there. I can switch them and turn this one off. I can get the color here with this. I can make them black. And I can make them translucent. Now, the time, if you put a lot of life into your SketchUp model, I've, I've worked on projects and put tons of people in, and then somebody says, can you go for a head and line style? And the people don't show up correctly or vice versa. It, it's an absolute ache at the time to change all that. So well done, the 2dpeople.com. Um, really love that. And hopefully they're going to bring out more um, series soon. So you've got series one and series two. Our people are so efficient, they change their appearance dependent on your style of fashion look. Pretty cool. Okay, so on to the extensions. Um, we have a little offer at the moment for the bundle. Uh, they're normally £20 for the two bundles of 2D people. Save you a lot of time. Uh, to the 15th of May, it is £12. Flex Tools, there's a 15% discount um, off of Flex Tools. Um, we're going to have a webinar on that, and Yoni from Flex Tools just gives us some amazing things. The work that they've done on this is just phenomenal. Webinar soon, so we'll keep you posted with that. Um, if you go to our website, we've got a page on Flex Tools. Um, there is a trial for the 2dpeople.com. There's a trial for Flex Tools, and there's a trial for the um, Profile Builder. And there is a 50% discount on the profile builder. Um, you can keep it held. It actually ends on the 31st of May, but um, um, Elmtech and their good goodwill have said that they can have um, special consideration for those that have attended this webinar. Just to let you know, to finish off here, um, we do authorize training courses. We have been doing for years and tailored training and online as well. Some people get shocked when they say, how can you do four hours, eight hours, 16 hours, and 24 hours training? Uh, we have a very good system. The delivery of that works well, and it works. And I've got uh, some clients that can justify that. So anybody who's interested to find out more, just let me know and I can uh, prove the point. Um, V-Ray training, we're doing 16 hours of V-Ray training, breaking it down into small chunks. Um, Adam um, is our trainer. He has done some renders of the project in V-Ray, um, taking the model and uh, putting it on the terrain with uh, scatter and lob work for uh, V-Ray. And uh, now we are in our Q&A session. Okay, so I know that we are kind of six minutes past, but um, if anybody... Thanks very much for all that. Is Trimble Connect a drop? 
a Dropbox for SketchUp. Well, you can upload, there's file space on there that you can save up your models, yes. Can anyone view your models online without having SketchUp? Um, Trimble Connect, I think. Um, or you can upload it. Um, there's other plugins there that you can actually access to, to view models, um, like Kubity. Um, of other things. I'll have a look at that, Angus, and come back to you in a bit more detail. Is Trimble Connect a public forum share or do you have control as? Yes, you have control as to who sees it. Um, permissions are set, I believe, from the project and who can't see it. Um, it's actually like a BIM collaboration system. You know, the likes of Navisworks, um, is it BIMX or that, or something with Darkicad? Uh, it's going that way, but it's it's a lot lighter, it looks easier to learn and work with, and that's what designers want. I've just been waiting so long for this to come out. Curic has an, yes, you're right, Dana. Curic has an Align View plugin, spot on. Curic is an amazing plugin. It also does, a, it takes the three information and flattens it down to 2D as well. I've seen that. It would be cool to bring part of the rock inside by perforating the wall. It would help break up the rectilinearness of the building. Yes, I like the design idea of that. Um, actually, it did, but it was too close to the stair to go downstairs, so I moved it out. So in profile, they have not updated the layer to tag. Yes. There's a couple of things. Um, some plugins say geometry to layer zero should be to tag or to untagged. Um, so regarding the questions, well, I obviously haven't been listening. I wasn't part one of the lesson. It's recorded, so you'll get it all, okay? As I'm from Yes, a recording is going out. Can you send us out a schedule and sign up for future webinars? Definitely will do. If you think this was good and you think there's potential there, I'm happy to hear and happy to help. Um, quite a few. Any other questions coming in? Thanks. Dimitri, good to see you. Um, I hope I did my work okay. Um, I'm really happy that you joined. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay, well, folks, um, I would say, okay, Eddie, good to see you. I'll be contacting you soon. Um, Sketch out whisper. <laughs> what does that mean? Whisper sketch out. Just a great webinar. Thank you. No, I really appreciate all these uh, comments. It really helps to, um, if I can spread my knowledge and help to get the word out there so that designers are not just looking at SketchUp and knowing that it's good, it's actually using it as well and using it efficiently. Um, that is my sole reason for doing what I do. Thanks, Paul. I don't know if you have to tame SketchUp though, maybe sometimes, yes. I can think of having some crazy days in SketchUp where things just don't go right. Um, like drawing a box, it becomes more difficult the more you use SketchUp. Okay, um, as I say, there's so much to learn. You better believe it, Sue. So I'm um, finding that as well. It's changing all the time. It's great. It's a great. It's a great. Uh, it's a great system, isn't it? Okay. Um, any other questions or you know you know our contact details? I'll be happy to help. I'll be sending out the coupon codes for the plugins um, next week and. Uh, yeah, we'll be in touch soon. Okay, 
stay safe, have a good holiday weekend, even though it won't feel like a holiday, I'm sure, in a way, but um, all the best and I'll be in touch.